The people, no, I'm not doing with my sunglasses. I'm gonna get those off. Wearing sunglasses blocks the eyes, which are the window to the soul. They literally cannot stop lying to you. And the people claiming to be telling you the truth are the biggest liars of the bunch. <laughs> Viva Fry, former Montreal litigator turned current Florida rumbler. And for those of you who haven't seen Winnie the Westie in a while, Winnie the Westie, say hello. Hello, I'm going back down to Twitter. All right, this is a story. I'm just, I, I read the news, I read Twitter. I don't follow this guy, but I follow his tweets. His handle is at McFall. He was a US Russian ambassador in 2012 to 2014. That would be under the Obama administration. So that might tell you ideologically, politically, where he is leaning. Oh my God, he's an idiot. I follow this guy and the outrageous rubbish that he spews day in and day out as relates to the Russia-Ukraine war, painting Putin to be the new... It doesn't end, and the lies and disinformation that he pushes truly is off the charts, even by political standards. A bullshit? A bullshit? Oh, Michael Anthony McFall is an American academic and diplomat who served as the United States ambassador to Russia from 2012 to 2014. McFall is currently the Ken Oliver and Angela Nomalini Professor in International Studies in the Department of Political Science at Stanford University, where he's the director of the Freeman Spokely Institute for International Studies. He is also a Peter and Helen Bing Senior Fellow at the Hoover Institution. He's also a contributing columnist at the Washington Post. Well, that explains everything. No longer any need to read anything. And we'll just scroll down to his face. That is the man right there. Now, recently, McFall took to Twitter to play the victim, to play the righteous interlocutor, to tell everyone, if you want to engage with me, honestly, I will engage with you. But if you call me names, I'm going to block you. If your purpose here is to call me profane names, to waste my time trying to block you all, keep at it. However, if your aim is to get me to read you, please stop at the profanity, make an argument, and bring some data. I'll do my best to respond. How nice of him. After having followed McFall on Twitter for a long enough period of time, I don't know what other name to call him other than a liar because he is either one of two things, ignorant beyond description or dishonest beyond description. And the most recent iteration of that dishonesty came today. He quote tweets an article from RT claiming that basically Putin has admitted now threatened Finland, said I didn't have a problem with Finland before this, but now there's gonna be a problem. Some awesome geopolitical analysis from McFall. Putin is now threatening our new NATO ally, yet some in the West still cling to the illusion that the Russian threat only extends to Ukraine. Now, because I have followed McFall for long enough on Twitter to know that you cannot trust a darn word he says, I have to go to the RT article to verify for myself, and this is not a case of trust but verify. I know McFall well enough to know that you cannot trust a word he says, so this is distrust and verify, and I go to the original RT article, I read through it, and lo and behold, McFall is either ignorant, which I no longer believe, or he's just outright dishonest, a propagandist pushing an endless proxy war with Russia. It's the latter. Putin announced his response to Finland joining NATO. Helsinki has not had any, quote, trouble, end quote, with Moscow for years, but now it will, the Russian president has said. Russia will create a new military district to reinforce its positions near Finland in response to the latter's decision to join NATO, Russian President Vladimir Putin has announced. Now, in fairness to McFall, the first paragraph of the article might, in some sense, sort of describe the half-truth that McFall spouted on Twitter. However, I do have to underscore the ultimate irony in all of this is now you've got McFall citing RT, which is Russia Today or Russia Tele... It's Russia Today. You've got McFall citing what everyone writes off as pro-Putin propaganda, and McFall is citing it to illustrate what a threat to society, a threat to the world Putin is. Based on the first paragraph, all right, maybe I can understand someone describing the article that way, but unfortunately... The article is more than one paragraph long. Reading a little further into the art. What is this? This guy's doing a wheelie. Man, only in Florida. There's a kid doing a wheelie. Is he gonna do it as we go by? There he is, there he is. He's doing it. He's doing it. Winston, don't do that. Only in Florida. Now, you read the article, and what the article actually details is a very real problem with NATO and what some people say is the actual underlying cause of all of this conflict, that NATO keeps encroaching on Russia, placing military bases surrounding Russia, threatening Russia's sovereignty uh, via an alliance with a bunch of countries, all of whom are being used in this proxy war against Russia, the latest of which is Finland. Putin is probably accurately noting that there hasn't really been any conflict between Finland and Russia recently, although they do have a history. The Winter War was a war between the Soviet Union and Finland. It began with a Soviet invasion of Finland on 30 November 1939, three months after the outbreak of World War II, and ended three and a half months later with the Moscow Peace Treaty on 13 March 1940. Despite superior military strength, especially in tanks and aircraft, the Soviet Union suffered severe losses and initially made little headway. 
The League of Nations deemed the attack illegal and expelled the Soviet Union. Uh, there hadn't been any recent conflicts, but apparently now that Finland has joined NATO, there will be, but it's a little bit more complicated than that, and it requires reading to the end of the RT article, McFall. Last week, Helsinki announced plans to sign a Defense Cooperation Agreement, DCA, with the U.S., allowing Washington to station troops and stockpile weapons and ammunition in the country. The Finnish Foreign Ministry said Helsinki will open 15 zones across the country in which Washington will be provided with quote, unimpeded access and use, end quote. Would you look at that? The problem is not as simplistic as Finland joining NATO, although many people would see that as continued aggression of NATO towards Russia. The problem is not just Finland joining NATO. The problem is Finland allowing the U.S. to basically use Finland as a repository. Is that the word? Repository. A place, building, or receptacle where things are or may be stored. A deep repository for nuclear waste. Or in this case, for nuclear weapons. I mean weapons. I mean, it's not a proxy war. Just go along with the script, people. A repository for arms arms in the conflict against Russia. At the risk of being called a Putin apologist, because I know I will be called a Putin apologist, the situation is as ridiculous as China using Mexico to stockpile weapons in a conflict against the U.S. Oh, I'm sure the U.S. would have no problem with China doing that in Mexico on its own border. Get in your mouse and get out of here. You can come to whatever conclusions you want in the broader context of this conflict between Russia and Ukraine, but my goodness, when you take to Twitter to spew disinformation by way of half-truths, that makes you ignorant or a liar. And the only question, McFall, former U.S. ambassador to Russia, which one are you? You! You! Liar! All right, and with that said, I realize now that I am late to pick up my child from school, so we shall uh, go pick up a kid from school. What do you say? What are you looking at? You know the drill. If you like what I do, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment in the comment section below on Rumble, Viva Fry. On Twitter, the Viva Fry. You can go to vivabarneslaw.locals.com to support us there if you so choose. But more important than anything, get out there, exercise, sunlight, talk to people in real life. It's actually quite nice. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. Booyah! The greatest threat to freedom is the absence of criticism, Sol Woyinka. Когда мы достигнем своих целей, о которых вы сказали, теперь вернемся к этим целям. Они не меняются. Вот я напомню, о чем мы тогда говорили. О денацификации Украины, о, о демилитаризации, о ее нейтральном статусе. Теперь, что касается демилитаризации, ну, не хотят договариваться, ну что ж, мы тогда вынуждены принимать другие, в том числе военные меры. Но сегодня Украина почти ничего уже не производит. Ну, пытаются что-то там еще сохранить. Но почти ничего не происходит. Все привозят, извините за мовитон, ну, на халяву все привозят. Но эта халява когда-то может и закончиться. И, судя по всему, так и заканчивается.